Okay. Um, hello guys. So, ikukompletuhin ko na lang yung lecture sa dun sa discuss natin before. So, we have the, we just discussed yung electron and play space. So, itutuloy ko siya and then expand ko siya up to dun sa mga binigay ko na reading assignment sa inyo. So, now, uh, consider a time-independent um, Schrodinger's equation. So, you have, you have H psi sub n r is equal to E sub n psi of n of, uh, of r. So, again, yung H natin or the Hamiltonian can be written as the sum of the uh, kinetic energy operator and potential energy operator. So, basically, magiging ano siya? Negative H bar squared over 2 M naught. So, M naught is the mass of the electron. Del squared times psi sub n psi r plus B r times psi sub n r. And that's still equal to E sub n uh, psi uh, n of r. So, where sa electron in free space, meaning there are, no, nasa vacuum lang siya, and no other, uh, tawag ito, no other um, hindering uh, quantities around it. Yung potential niya, or PR, can be treated as zero. So, ibig sabihin, madadrop natin itong buong term na to. So, now, pwede natin simple yung equation. So, sa isa yung natin mga components. So, we have, E sub n is the energy eigenvalues. And psi n is the eigenstates. Or, I, or are the eigenstates. M naught is the mass of the electron. So, yung wave function, of course, uh, kung familiar siguro na kapag na kayo ng mga ganito, and we even discussed before sa, I think sa 1, 2 series, may ibang kasing mga uh, functions na exponential. So, usually, wave function can be written as a uh, exponential function or sum of sine and cosine. So, psi sub n could be a position of, uh, sorry, could be a function of uh, r or position and time. So, uh, usually, pinapasimple natin. So, you have the psi as a function of r lang and multiplied by a uh, constant, not really constant, I mean, uh, the exponential term na solely dependent on time. So, you have e raised to negative omega, uh, sorry, negative i omega t. So, it is position, this is the time. Okay? So, pwede natin isulat yung ex equation natin kanina, so the equation as ito na lang kasi mawala na yung potential. So, you have h bar squared over 2m del squared psi sub n is equal to en psi n. So, basically, kinetic energy lang yung kinukuha mo. So, yung energy na makukuha mo is from kinetic energy. Okay? So, as I have discussed then before, uh, yung operator, let's say yung Hamilton yung H, is nag operate doon sa wave function mo. So, ang ibinibigay niya, parang ini-extract niya yung energy from that wave function. So, this is E sub n. So, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na ang H at E ay equal. Okay? Uh, yun yung ano, rule sa quantum mechanics. So, you operate on a wave function, it will give you a eigenvalue and still retains the wave function. And yun lang yan. Okay? Let's move on. So, since the electron, uh, for an electron in free space, wala nga potential, so zero in V, uh, yung energy mo na lang depends on the kinetics. So, pwede natin express yung E sub N as the, sorry, as the uh, the uh, momentum squared over 2M. So, pwede, uh, pwede makuha mo siya ng ganito. And remember, yung P is actually H bar K sub N. And you can have P sub N as H bar squared, K N squared over 2M. Okay? And uh, dahil uh, pwede mo equate sa P over 2M, pwede mo na lang pasimplihin, expression mo, magiging na siya. Oh, sorry, equal din yung E sub N sa H bar omega N. Okay? And you now have an expression of omega K. So, pwede mong isulat itong uh, wave, sorry, yung frequency, omega, as h bar, makakancel yung h ng h dito, h bar k sa k squared m over 2m. So, ito yung uh, dispersion mo. And you can see constant ng h bar, constant ng m, not, and this will just become a parabolic uh, behavior, uh, sorry, dependence. Okay? So, 
as for the uh, wave function, mangyayari dyan is, di ba simulat natin siya sa size of R na lang and then times e raised to I, negative I omega T. Uh, itong psi of R natin, usually sum, pwede natin siya isulat as sum ng dalawang terms. So you, let's say we have A e raised to I K R, K dot R plus B e raised to negative I K dot R. So itong A and B are just uh, amplitudes. So yung amplitude na tong wave na to, parte ng wave na nagpapropagate along K direction. Okay? And the other one propagates along the negative K direction. So hindi siya physical direction na. Ang physical direction dito is yung R. This is in reciprocal space. So tandaan nyo, this is a wave. So medyo kailangan i-treat natin siya as such. So itong E uh, raised to negative I omega T is the time dependence of the wave function. So now, we can consider a simple case na zero lang itong B, which is walang, uh, sorry, ito na lang mawala itong term na to. So, magiging na lang A, uh, yung itong term na nagpapropagate yung wave along K, uh, K direction. And of course, pasimplihin lang na muna natin, instead of three dimension, let's assume na nag lang siya sa X direction. So, oops, sorry. Uh, mangyayari is, ito na lang yung magiging expression natin. So, dahil that product, uh, ito nga dito. So, k dot r is just uh, kx uh, i hat plus ky j hat plus kz k hat dot. Yung r is just x i hat yj hat plus k uh, c k hat. So, mag that product siya. So, magmamatter lang ay yung same ng unit factor. So, magiging lang siyang uh, kx dot times x. Wala nang that product. It still retains the uh, negative e raised to negative i omega t. Okay? So, yan na yung uh, wave function natin along x direction. Uh, and nagpapropagate along k x in the reciprocal space. So, now using the momentum operator, so you have p hat x. Since nasa x direction lang, p hat x lang. So, kapag p yan, so yun yung buong momentum mo. So, alam natin na na ang momentum operator is just equal to uh, negative i h bar partial derivative with respect to x. So, di derivative lang natin siya. So, ipapalit lang natin yung expression for the wave function. And of course, dahil uh, ng derivative with respect to x, constant lang tong term na to. So, ito lang yung derivative natin. So, mangyayari dyan, may i tayo dito, may h bar. Since derivative natin, bababa yung i, yung kx, and still retains the a, e raised to i kx, uh, x times e raised to negative i omega t. Okay. So, magmumultiply yung dalawang i. So, make negative i squared, h bar, kx, and still this whole term. Okay. So, ang mangyayari, magiging negative i squared is just negative 1. Sorry, negative times negative 1 is just positive 1. And matitan na lang yung h bar, kx. And kung titan nyo, itong bong to is still the same as the wave function, the original one. That's the, ano, that's the behavior of an operator. Nag-operate ka, same wave function, pero ibibigay niya pa rin sa'yo yung exactong wave function mo. And it's just give you some factor. Kagaya nito. H bar kx. So, uh, para ang ginagawa niya, similar to sa ginawa natin kanya sa Hamiltonian, when you operate, i-extract nila yung information na kailangan mo pertaining doon sa operator na ginagamit mo. So in this case, since momentum operator, ibigay niya sa yung momentum. Okay? So yung momentum na binigay niya is h bar kx. So you can actually see the dimensionality para makita niyo kung tama yung sagot niyo. So una, tingnan niyo, momentum ba ang quantity na to? Of course, you have h bar kx. Okay? And since kailangan niyo makita kung na-retain ba yung wave function. And kapag na-retain yung kagaya nito, tama yung ginawa yung solution. Kapag hindi, there's something wrong dun sa step. So, be careful kapag masasalve ka ng ganun. Okay? So, doing the same calculation for y and z will give you the same. So, for momentum along uh, y is h bar ky. For pz or momentum along z is h bar kz. So, pag i-add mo yan, still get the same h bar kx. And hindi na siya kx, ky, na hiwahiwalay. It's just the whole total uh, momentum. Okay? So, mm, Yan yung pagkuha ng momentum operator. Ma momentum dun sa paggamit ng momentum operator. So from these results, 
the momentum the momentum ng electron in free space is just this one, right? And remember, yung energy uh, can also be expressed as P squared, which is momentum, over 2M. And pwede natin express yung P as a square root of uh, 2M, not E. So equate natin siya sa uh, H bar K, kasi ito rin yung kanina, di ba? So ito yung uh, pwede natin gamit na expression din. So, also note na yung energy is also H equal to H bar omega, where omega is the frequency. So, hence, pwede natin ilagay na ganito. Uh, H omega is now equal to H bar. Yung omega ito. Uh, uh, H bar squared kx squared 2m naught. So, pwede natin i-rewrite ito. Maka-cancel yung isang H bar dito. Kung itong H bar dito, matitira 1. So, you have uh, omega, since function na siya ng k, pwede natin sulat na omega k, is equal to h bar k squared over 2m naught, which is the same dun sa uh, nasolve natin kanina. Ano yun dito? Here. Okay. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, ngayon, kung makikita nyo, Ang um, dependence ng frequency sa k vector here is parabolic. So habang lumalaki ko yung wave vector mo, tumatas na tumatas yung frequency. Okay? Um, yung wave vector as I mentioned before uh, is related sa reciprocal space. Okay? So itong mga reciprocal space siguro kung familiar kayo, uh, hindi siya physical space, uh, it's just a way to simplify yung pag-solve ng mga, mga, ex, mga specific problems. So, halimbawa, ang wave, di ba, kung pamilya kayo sa pag-transform, mga Fourier transform, yung mga ganun, di ba? We usually, let's say, kung meron kang X space, uh, tinatransform natin siya into omega or frequency domain, mga ganun. Mas madali kasi, depende sa situation. Okay? So, dahil nasolve natin yung sa electron in free space, let's try to solve uh, yung electron wave packet and yung dispersion niya. So, na-describe na natin yun, yung behavior ng electron in free space and well-defined K space. So, now suppose, uh, gusto naman natin makuha yung uh, description or describe yung electron sa particular average position in space. So, pwede natin, pwede, uh, and specifically, gusto natin gamitin is yung as a sum of number of plane waves. So, plane waves are just yung uh, normal lang na mga waves. Yung mga plane waves lang is parang so yung usual wave na nakikita nyo. Pero syempre, pwedeng iba-iba. Pwedeng iba-ibang form. And pwede siyang sum. Diba ang mga wave, you can superposition them, you can add them and sub subtract them. Okay? So, we can limit then uh, yung uh, yung electron to occupy yung ano lang, finite region lang of space forming a wave packet. So, kaya siya parang wave. Pwede na mo siyang wave packet. So, the example, uh, yung ganyan. So, it could just be something like this. Ganyan lang. Kasi yung wave na pinakita natin is just continuous in a long certain, uh, I mean, wide range. Pero in this case, packet lang siya. So, maliit lang na siya na mga waves. Pwede ganyan. Pwede ganyan lang. Ganyan. Okay? So, uh, and then again, yung wave packet is just superposition of several uh Wave packets are is superposition of several eigenstates, so they could be you know like the describe destructive uh, destructive uh, uh, superposition uh, superposition or padding there. Uh, with the exception and some localized region and space. So yun yung labi nagitaw kay na na may area na okay naman yung may mayro parin defined na waves, right? So consider a plane wave with uh, momentum h bar k naught, sorry. Okay, and in this x direction, and create a Gaussian pulse from this wave plane wave such that at time equals zero. So as we na natin at time equals zero, para mas simple. So along x direction lang then, and given a certain momentum. So isusulat natin that say yung wave function niya psi of uh, x t zero. It's just equal to A 
e raised to kx, sorry, k, k0x times e raised to negative uh, x minus x na squared over 4 delta x squared. So itong expression na to could also be written as delta x squared. Ginawa ko na lang ganito para mas masimple. Kasi baka malito pa itong maraming parenthesis. It's just the same for us. Okay? So, uh, in this case, yung A is the amplitude. And, you know, pwede siyang masolve as uh, this. We have 1 over 2 uh, pi delta x squared raised to negative 1 fourth. Okay? And the average position uh, nung uh, wave packet is the average of x, which is x naught. So, here. Okay? And the spatial spread, meaning uh, kung gano'ng ka-spread yung may packet mo is delta x. So in this case, uh, here we have an example. So this is your psi of x and ito yung delta x mo kung gano'ng ka-spread yung wave mo. So ganito siya. Okay? Uh, this is just an example. Hindi naman ito exact kung ito yung mismong graph nitong equation na ito. Okay? Alright. So, uh, pwede natin makuha yung probability density. Uh, nandun to sa uh, binigay ko sa inyong lecture note. Um, yung probability, probability density is just the square of the wave function. So in this case, at t equals 0, pwede natin makuha by this expression. So yung uh, magnitude ng wave function here. Sorry. It's just uh, this, this one. The square of the wave function is equal to the product ng wave function times the conjugate and the conjugate. It's conjugate. So, yan. So, you conjugate mo lang yung wave function mo. So, since anapin mo lang yung imaginary. So, in this case, uh, yung conjugate niya is positive i. So, a e raised to i k 0 x times e raised to negative x minus x naught squared over 4 delta x squared. And then multiply by the original wave function, which is ito lang. And multiply mo siya, so you have a squared. Ito, magka-cancel out sila kasi yung exponent yung 0. Naging 1 lang. And then ito, since same lang sila, uh, add lang siya, basically. So you have e raised to negative x minus x naught over 2 delta x squared. Okay? So isusulan natin ito yung probability density at time equals 0 ng wave function mo. So, this contains a continuum uh, ng momentum uh, around the original plane wave with, of course, momentum h bar k naught. Okay? So, finding yung value ng mga momentum na yun, kailangan natin sombrang kunin. Kasi kung titignan nyo dito, naka-x yung expression mo in terms of x. So, since momentum hinahanap natin, we need to express it in terms of k. So, how do we do that? Uh, of course, nabanggit ko kanina rin yung Fourier transform. Fourier transform yung ginagamit natin to transform a certain function in, let's say, a, a domain to another. So let's say from, pre, from position to frequency domain. In our case, we want to transform from position to uh, position x to uh, vector k or k space. So using Fourier transform, eh, magiging na lang siya in terms of x, in uh, instead of x magiging in terms of k, still at time equals 0. So now we have 1 over a over square root of pi. This is related with the temporary transform. And uh, e raised to negative i k minus k naught times x times negative k minus k naught squared delta x squared. So ang itsura naman niya is parang ganito. So you have a center, k naught, ayun yung average position niya, no? So, ito siya. And yung delta, okay, yung spread, kung titignan nyo kasi, itong mga nandito sa side na ta tail, is parang negligible na palit ng balit. So, yung spread niya is measured by delta k. And, uh, uh, you can also calculate yung probability density ng in case space na. So, ganun din, we still get the square of the wave function, which is, the, the pro, which is the, just the product of the wave function and its conjugate. So, iko conjugate lang natin and then we just have this. So, now, uh, ito, uh, psi star and psi. And, of course, ito yung, ito yung uh, conjugate ng wave function times the original wave function. Kung multiply tayo, you have 1 over L, uh, a squared pi. 
mawala yung square root. And magka-cancel out lang din itong dalawang ito. Magiging 0 na exponent. And you will be left with this. So you have e raised to negative k minus k naught squared times 2 delta k squared. Okay? Uh, further, uh, we can actually simplify. Kasi kung titignan nyo, itong expression na to ay in terms of, sorry, in terms of k. But meron tayong delta x. So how do we transform this into k space? Kasi meron tayong delta x dito, di ba? At delta k. Dito sa pinakita ko sa inyo. So we have the delta uh, k here. So tandaan nyo, this is a Gaussian uh, distribution. So what we can do is to recall yung expression ng Gaussian distribution. So if you have a Gaussian distribution f of x, it's just equal to this quantity. So ipapattern lang natin. So we have negative 1 half x minus mu. Mu is the average or the mean squared over sigma squared. In yung sigma, kung tatanda kung uh, pamilya kayo, is just the standard deviation. Ito yung measure ng spread. Okay? Kaya meron tayo dito. Okay. So using this pattern, we can actually see or we can uh, clear, uh, sorry, safely say na yung 1 over 2 delta x here is equal to delta k. So, papalitan lang natin now, instead of multiplying by 2 delta x squared, magiging na siyang uh, oh, negative k minus k naught squared over 2 delta k squared. So, yung function natin solely, nagde-depend na lang sa k. Okay? So, yan na yung uh, probability density uh, along, uh, sorry, in k space at time equals 0. Alright? So, Kung titinan nyo itong nakuha natin na relationship ng k, ng delta k at delta x, this looks familiar. Okay? Kung i-rearrange natin, you will have delta x delta k is equal to 1 half. This is actually uh, very related sa topic na na-discuss natin before. So, pero i-analyze muna natin. So, kung titinan nyo, yung change sa position and change sa, let's say, k space is a constant quantity. Meaning, kung tumaas, let's say, kung tumaas itong value ng uh, ba? Uh, sa real space kung lumaki yung width width siya diba spread the corresponding case space will also uh, increase right so similarly kapag uh, naman tumaas yung sa case space uh, mag increase din sorry pag nilocalize mo yung constant pulse sa case space the width of the pulse of in real space and delta x will also increase so, hindi mo pwedeng taasan parehas kasi constant lang. It's either bababa yung isa, tataas yung isa. Alright? So, constant lang siya. So, masana na-imagine nyo na kung yung tinutukoy ko dito ng relationship. Alright. So, let's recall na yung momentum is actually related to uh, K. So, P is equal to H bar, uh, H bar K. Right? So, palitan natin. So, pag kinam mo kasi yung uh, delta P mangyayari dyan, is yung delta K yung magkumago. Right? Parang change lang. So, papalitan mo lang yung delta K dun sa kanina expression ng P. Now, we have delta P, oh, sorry, delta X, delta P is equal to H bar over 2. And this is a special case ng uncertainty principle. So, bakit? Kasi nabagay natin, ba? Habang mas nagiging certain ka dun sa position, mas lagi uncertain ka dun sa momentum. And similarly, kapag mas gusto mo na mas accurate yung pag-measure mo ng momentum, mo mahihirapan kang makuha naman yung position. E dahil nga, constant lang yung value na yan. Okay? So that's the uncertainty principle. Meaning, it's not possible to simultaneously know the exact position of the particle and its momentum. Again, i-reiterate ko lang, ang uncertainty principle does not only apply to position and momentum. Meron din sa, let's say, sa energy. Uh, may, mga pe, may mga pair ito. So, energy and uh, I'm not sure kung angular momentum. Uh, basta pares-pares sila. Alright? So, uh, let's continue. So, example. Suppose that at t equals 0, uh, the wave function of an electron in free space is given by this wave function. So, you have x as i of x0 is equal to a e raised to i k0x times e 
raised to negative k, uh, sorry, negative x minus x naught squared over 4 delta x squared. So find your probability density uh, of psi x0, find psi k0 and delta k. So solution, again, kung makukunin yung probability density, you just need to multiply yung conjugate ng wave function with the wave function itself. So madali lang yan. Uh, similar sa ginawa natin sa Excel discussion. So, magiging lang siyang a squared e raised to negative uh, x minus x squared over 2 delta x squared. Kasi mag-add lang ito. Alright? So, me, therefore, ito yung expression natin for the uh, probability density. Next, how to get the uh, side of k. Again, gagamit tayo ng Fourier transform. So, kung naalala nyo pa yung Fourier transform, so we need to get the uh, dependence ng wave function in terms of k. So, it's proportional to uh, integral from negative infinity to infinity ng psi of k0 times e raised to negative kx dx. So, palita, ibalik lang natin yung expression for psi k0. So, ito yan. Uh, And here, and of course, we have the uh, constant. Um, mag, ano siya, mag All right, so pala tayo mag change variable kasi medyo marami to, ano? So we can change variable, let's say uh, beta is equal to 2k minus k naught delta x. So this is related to uh, this one and this one. Oh no, this is delta k, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, and then ito. So we have uh, x minus x naught over 4 delta x squared. So pwede natin ito, simplihin, gawin natin. Kasi pwede nang, pag tinanggal mo square, magiging lang siya ganito eh. Alright, and then of course yung y naught, let's say negative i b squared. Uh, sorry, b over 2. So we can rewrite this whole equation into this. So instead of writing this, we have this. Instead of writing this, ito na lang. Mas simple ito. So kung titan nyo, this is similar form sa mga nasob natin natin sa 1, 2, 3. We can further change variable para mas ma-recall nyo uh, here. So let's say z is equal to y minus y naught. Oops, sorry. Nakalimutan. May mali dito. B squared. All right. Uh, now, this is just dy. So, ganun lang din siya. Uh, ngayon, kung tatandaan nyo, this is a special uh, uh, integral. It's just equal to square root of pi. So, itong buong to ay equal lang sa square root of pi. So, palitan lang natin. Right? Uh, so, yung buong integral na yun, magiging pi, square root of pi lang, makaka square root of pi dito. Matitira is, dito na lang expression na to. And, babalik mo lang yung for beta, term for beta, etc. Magka-cancel, right? And you will have this expression. Okay. So, uh, again, this is in terms of in terms of k and meron pa rin delta x. So, using yung similar trick sa paggamit ng Gaussian distribution, we can say na ang delta x is, uh, sorry, delta k is equal to 1 over 2 delta x. Kung mapapansin nyo, this is still the same as sa nakuha natin kanina. Kahit na magkaiba pa siya ng form ng wave function. Bakit? Kasi nga, this should be related to uncertainty principle. It's always that value. Okay, so na, nasod natin example. Okay, so those, yung mga diniscuss natin kanina are nagdedepende sa, sorry, hindi nakadepende sa time kasi time equals zero. Ano naman mangyayari? Kapag we consider a case na nagdedepende na sa time. So, we have the Gaussian wave packet evolution in time. So now let's co consider yung case na t is greater than zero. So hindi na natin ininagalap yung term na yung, uh, yung time component. Okay? So let's consider this wave function. So we have this wave function. Hindi ko na napapangitin. Medyo mahaba. Uh, para lang mas mabilis. So kung titinan nyo, we have this term the e raised to negative i omega kt. So omega k is, you know, the frequency dependent on k. 
So this gives the dis uh, dispersion relation of PK na nasolve natin kanina, which is, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So magiging lang siyang H bar K squared over 2M0 or the mass of the electron. Okay. So we can still uh, do some analysis. Pwede natin gamitan ng uh, Taylor expansion itong uh, frequency. So, Taylor expansion about or around k sub zero. Uh, usually, ganito yung ginagawa natin sa Taylor, di ba? So, magiging lang siyang h bar k, k zero squared over 2 m naught times h bar k zero times k minus k zero over m zero plus h bar uh, k minus k naught zero squared over 2 m zero. Okay. So, in order to determine the effect of dispersion on Gaussian poles, as a function of time, we need to obtain itong uh, expression na to. We have the XKT using Fourier transform. All right? So, uh, let's do that. Um, itong ay kabalita rin naman to, no? kasi yung kanina from X to K. Ngayon naman we have from K to X. So, in order to do that, we need to do a Fourier transform. This is a very much, a much more complicated than the previous one kasi may time na tayo. So, uh, magiging gando lang siya. So, recall nyo na lang muna yung Fourier transform. So, we have this long uh, expression. Um, itong term na to, we have e raised to k k not x minus omega not omega not t times integral from sorry. It should be negative infinity to infinity. And then, uh, itong term na to, e raised to k, uh, e raised to i minus, uh, e raised to i k minus k zero times e x minus k naught minus h bar k naught t over m, uh, which is the same as uh, we have to obtain from the uh, Taylor series expansion kanina. And then, ito na kabila. Alright? So, yung factor na nauna dito, here, uh, is a plane wave with, of course, yung ano niya, frequency niya is from here, yung nandun sa kanina sa uh, expression ng, uh, ito, sa, in-expand natin. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So, now, uh, Yung plane wave na yun also has a what we call phase velocity. So kung may yung um, frequency, you can actually get the velocity, which is just divide malay yung uh, omega ng k. So magigil lang siyang h bar k naught over 2 m naught. So yung integral naman dun sa kaninang term, itong mahaba na to, it shows that uh, yung center ng wave packet natin moves at the distance, ito. Ito lang yung may time na component, di ba? Kasi kung titan nyo doon sa original natin, wala itong, di ba? And the average position is x naught. Now, nag-move na siya with this particular, this is equivalent to, ano, position then. So, uh, you have h bar k naught t over m naught. So, yan yung uh, mag-move siya ng ganun. So, this indicates a group velocity for the wave packet nagiging ito. So, velocity times time is uh, position. So, you have T here. Alright? So, group velocity is H bar K naught over M sub zero. And lastly, you have the term yung nasa dulo. We have this. Mm. And this shows that the width delta X of the wave packet increases with time. So, yan. Okay? Kasi naka-multiply. Sorry. Naka-multiply siya dito. Okay, so now we can see, we can express the delta x as a function of time, and this is just equal to this one. So, ngayon, uh, if you can plot the wave function or the average uh, of the wave function, sorry, the probability density, so ito yan, psi uh, squared, uh, at time equals zero, ganito lang siya. 
mas ano siya, mas hindi masyadong spread. Alright? So, ito yung, kung ito ay in terms of uh, x, ito yung delta x mo. Now, as time goes, you know, to in, from zero to infinity, mas lumalaki ang yung spread. So, yung next nga is mas ganyan pa. Okay? Uh, however, you know, you should note na itong area na to should be equal to the area of this one. So, laging ganun yun. Equal lagi yung uh, yung probability. Alright? So, itong uh, ito yung expression na ito ang magsasabi kung gano'n ka bilis magbago yung width ng uh, probability density mo with respect to time. Okay. So, let's move on. So, uh, for a freely propagating pulse, the momenta of the plane wave component does not change. Therefore, ito, hindi nagbabago yung ano, di ba, yung, uh, yung mga value na yun. So, ibig sabihin, itong value na to ang mag-increase. Okay? So, at time equals zero, yung nasolve natin before, we have delta k, uh, sorry, delta x, delta p is equal to h bar squared. Uh, sorry, h bar over 2. However, at time greater than zero, magiging na lang siyang same expression, of course, in this, but in this case, greater than. So, still, uh, fixed value. Alright? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Uh, pag nagpapropagate ng wave mo, mas mahirap yung pag-measure mo. Diba? Lalo na kung gusto malaman yung position and momentum. So, kaya ganyan yung this is the general expression for the uncertainty principle in terms of momentum and position. Alright? So, uh, now, ito na yung, basically yung basis ko kanina is yung binigay ko sa inyo na reading na section 2.2.2. Now, let's move on to the hydrogen atom. So, yung mga case na ginawa natin kanina are just simple na, wa na walang ano walang potential na nag uh, ko control doon sa electron mo now let's consider a case na ang electron mo ay nako-combine sa isang potential na naglilimit syempre doon sa motion so basically naka-localize lang yung motion ng electron mo the mo the simplest case na we can uh, solve is the hydrogen atom why kasi it has one electron and one proton so yung proton it acts as the potential kasi nag in, bina, in uh, binabound niya yung electron within a certain space na hindi siya maka or, or mm, nililimit na lang yung motion ng electron to certain space lang okay so hydrogen has a positively charged nucleus so we has one proton nga and then a single uh, electron combined dun sa space na yan so now, consider a single electron moving in the Coulomb potential. So, pwede natin i-treat na lang as a Coulomb potential kasi positive charge ng proton, di ba? So, a Coulomb potential can be written as a spherical, in spherical coordinate. So, you have uh, you have V of R theta phi is just equal to negative E squared. E is the uh, electron charge over 4 pi epsilon not R. So, yan. Yan yung potential natin ngayon. So, in classical electrodynamics, hopefully, natakal nyo to, pero kung hindi, uh, ganda na siya. So, imagine, nag-orbit yung electron doon sa nucleus mo. We have a proton here. It has a radius of R and a velocity of V. So, recall natin yung electrodynamics. Moving particle will emit or produce a electromagnetic wave. So, it will radiate away yung energy. Diba? Ibig sabihin nun, hindi mag magiging unstable at some point itong ganitong system. However, we all know na hydrogen atom is very stable. So therefore, itong ganitong picture ng atom is wrong. So hindi pwedeng ganito yung uh, picture ng hydrogen atom. So, uh, let's use some trick na na-discover na, na before. So we all know na na-discover na ang nature or any particle ay nagbe-behave din as a wave. Okay? So, uh, there is a wave in the character of the electron. So, instead of moving just circular, we can treat na parang nag, ano siya, parang nag-move siya sa wave, of course. And then, of course, uh, at a certain orbit or circle here, there's, a, there's only a finite number of wave na pwede mo ilagay. Diba? So, instead of moving, of the electron moving ng circular, okay, mag, ano siya, parang nagwawabo. So, yan yung uh, pwede natin isipin na ganyan. Alright? 
So using that idea, ibig sabihin nun, uh, fix lang yung number of wavelength na pwede mo ilagay dun sa orbit. Alright? So, pwede natin ipakita na yung orbit uh, described by a radius r is a quantized uh, quantity. So, para siyang nakadepende lang sa n. So, usually kasi, para makuha mo yun, di ba? If you have lambda over 2 pi. Pero dahil nga, uh, depende sa n. So, n should be a positive non-zero integer. So, yan yung mangyayari sa orbit. Meaning, ang orbit mo is depend. Yung orbit na electron mo yun, pwede mabago. Alright? So, this shows that there are several orbits as n can take positive integer values. So, in 1913, si Niels Bohr, he was able to show yung spectral properties ng hydrogen. And pwede siyang ma-describe using some rules. So, una, electron exists in stable circular orbit around the proton. Uh, circular orbit meaning nagwawabol pa rin naman. Two, uh, I mean, sorry, nagwawabol in such a way na parang pwede siyang mag-iba-iba ng uh, orbit level. So, parang, ano lang, uh, ganyan, di ba? Tapos, another one. Sorry? Here. Oh, sorry. Uh, hold on. Uh, so, nangyari. Okay, sorry. Alright. Uh, wag na lang ganyan. Mento na lang. Mas mahirap pala yan. So, di ba nag-wobble yan? So, pwedeng mabago yung position. So, iba-iba. So, may iba-ibang value ng R. Depende sa N. Alright? So, next is uh, electrons can make transitions between orbits by emitting or absorption of a photon of energy H omega. H omega. Alright? So, and lastly, the angular momentum of the electron is in a given orbit is quantized according to this momentum P theta is equal to n h bar, where n is a non-zero positive integer. So, yan yung mga rules na yan. Okay? So, we can calculate the average radius ng electron na nag-orbit sa hydrogen. So, we can actually equate the electrostatic force with the centripetal force. So, kasi nag-move, di ba? So, electrostatic force is equal to this one. So we have uh, E squared over 4 pi epsilon, not R squared. And then the centripetal force is negative M0, oh sorry, M0 or the mass of the electron, V squared over R. Okay? So since we have this uh, rule kanina na pinagit natin na yung momentum natin is NH bar, uh, we can rewrite itong momentum as a as this one. So we have M not B R. And instead of R, R N na. Kasi uh, nakatipende sa N yung R. Alright? So we can rewrite the equation as such. So papalitan lang natin nandito. So magiging siyang uh, E squared over 4 by epsilon not R squared N is equal to R, sorry, 1 over R N M 0 times N squared H bar squared over R N squared. And Manipulate lang natin ito, magkakansil ibang terms. We will have the expression for Rn. So the, in this case, uh, since constant ito mga to, kapag mas malaki yung n, of course, mas malaki yung radius. Alright? So radius of the orbit is quantized, meaning discrete values. Okay, so for n equals 1, uh, papalitan mo lang, is actually equal to uh, 0.529, usually yun na lang yung value, angstrom or 10 to the minus 10 meters and this is called the Bohr radius usually denoted by a sub b so ito yung uh, uh, parang fundamental na value sa mga atoms okay so uh, we can also calculate the energy difference between orbit kasi di ba may iba ibang value ng orbit so 
uh, given uh, yung momentum ng electron na m0p, uh, you have n h bar over rn. We have, uh, re -re rearrange lang natin, we have v equals n h bar over m0rn. So, palitan lang natin yung expression ng rn here. We will have this particular expression. So, uh, pwede natin ma-derive itong b sub n. Okay? Which is h e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught n h bar. So, habang tumatas naman yung n, mas mababa naman yung momentum. Ah, sorry, yung velocity. Tama? Ibig sabihin nun, uh, kapag mas malayo, mas mabagal yung mag-move. So, for n equals 1, this is the velocity. Okay. So, pag alam mo yung velocity, alam mo yung mass, you can actually get the kinetic energy. So, using the expression for kinetic energy, t equals 1 half m b squared or m not b squared. Papalitan mo lang yung v. Uh, ito na yung magiging expression niya. Okay. And also, the potential energy, makukuha mo lang siya. Bakit? You have the force times the distance. Yun lang yun naman yung potential energy. So, the distance is r n and the force is yung coulomb uh, kanina. So, magiging ganito yung uh, expression for, sorry, capital V. This is the potential energy. So, using kinetic energy and potential energy, you can get the Hamiltonian or the total energy. So, the total energy is now equal to this expression. So, you have E sub N is equal to negative 1 half M0 E raised to 4 over 4 by epsilon naught squared and squared H bar squared. And kung mapapansin nyo, uh, may relationship ang kinetic energy at potential. So, the kinetic energy is actually negative one half ng potential. So this is uh, related to Burial theorem. Uh, I think this could this will be discussed uh, one six five, siguro or I think kapag daan na sa ibang subject oh, Not sure. Anyway, so uh, given the expression for En, you can get several values of En, diba? So for example, if you want to get the energy difference between N one and N two. Uh, dahil mas mataas yung N2, of course, it is, is subtract mo yung N1 from that. So, ito yung magiging expression niya. Okay? So, for N equals to 1, we will have a very specific energy. So, dahil constant lang naman itong mga ito eh. So, it is equal to negative uh, negative 13.606 actually, usually, electron volts. And this is the ground state energy of the hydrogen atom. So usually, tinatawag siyang Rydberg. Pero ang energy, ang Rydberg kasi ngayon, ginagamit siya as uh, another unit for energy. Eh. So wag, wag na lang. Tawagin na lang natin siyang ano, ground state energy ng, LA, ng uh, hydrogen atom. Okay. So kung titinan nyo, depende sa value ng N, iba-iba uh, yung energy. Right? So... Uh, this is from Levi, na book. Uh, doon nga sanabi natin, doon sa nabanggit na rule na sinabi ni Bohr, pwede mag-lose ng energy. Diba? So from higher energy level, here, pwede siya bumalik sa ground state. So iba, may mga value yung lambda na yun. And usually may mga tatatang tayong Lyman, Balmer, and Fashion uh, series or bands. Uh, and this could also happen vice versa. Pwede ring Babalik. Ito ay kapag nag-emit. Nag Ito ay kapag nag-absorb tata siya. And this actually related sa photoelectric effect. Di ba kapag uh, nag-absorb ang isang electron sa surface ng isang metal or any material, uh, ma-absorb niya energy and na-excite siya. And then of course, pupunta sa higher energy level. Ganun. Okay? So yun lang yung nasabi dito. Uh, so yun, ah, uh, Kung makakita nyo rin, those energy levels are quantized. And uh, this model actually works very well. However, only sa hydrogen atom. Uh, hindi siya ganun ka, ka tawag dito? Hindi siya ganun ka nag-work kapag if you go to system na mas, we have more than one electron. Okay? So... Yung model ni Bohr ng hydrogen atom can be viewed as a combination ng classical and quantum ideas. Kasi still believes, uh, sorry, still hold yung force. Gumamit pa rin tayo ng Coulomb law and centripetal force. Diba? 
So, however, better ang pag gagamit tayo ng method kung saan purely from quantum mechanics. And that's, you, that's the work or sorry, uh, purpose ng Schrodinger equation. So, Schrodinger equation will give you the direct information from quantum mechanics and of course only from the wave function. So again, nabanggit ko before, as long as you can write the wave function of any system, you can get everything or any information you need. So ganun lang yan. You just need to use operators. Tama. So dito kasi sa ginawa natin, mano-mano eh. You have to get the kinetic and potential to just get the Hamiltonian. But if you know the wave function of an electron, you just simply operate the Hamiltonian and you will get the same energy. All right? So uh, sa case ng mga atoms, uh, of course, dahil meron siyang spherical symmetry, uh, yung wave function can be written as a spherical uh, wave function, so which depends on r, theta, and phi. And interestingly, you can actually separate this dependence into three different functions. So we have rn, which depends on r. You have uh, theta uh, sub l, which, which depends on theta, and phi sub m, which depends on phi. And these are related to three uh, quantum numbers. So you have n, l, and m. So yung uh, quantum number n ay nakarelate sa radius, which we showed earlier. Yung quantum number l depends on theta. Quantum number m depends on phi. So itong mga to, actually, uh, should also follow yung certain uh, mga uh, dito? equation. For example, yung phi sub m of phi should satisfy this differential equation. So we have second derivative niya with respect to phi plus m squared uh, phi should be equal to zero. And of course, Samba, ano, yung, ano bang klase ng function yung magsasatisfy nito? Wave. So we have A, E raised to I, M, T. And you can see yung M dito is a quantum number for that particular wave function. So, ganoon din sa iba. And for example, yung A kasi dito it should be normalized nga. So, this could, alam diba sa mga wave naman, pwede natin makompute to. So, to do that, you can normalize it by getting the integral no uh, square no wave function na yun, should na isaset mo sa 1 para normalize so in this case dahil lang phi mo ay from 0 to pi you can compute the uh, phi star or conjugate times phi the d phi is equal to 1 and you will have a equals uh, 1 over square root of 2 pi and of course ito na yung buong pi mo pi function so we can see from here na yung phi function mo or p function is single valued. Magiging single valued lang siya kapag yung m ay integer. Right? And tandaan nyo, nakacycle to kasi zero to pi, di ba? Bumabalik-balik lang sa value niya. So, surely, single valued siya. And uh, the other quantum numbers, yung n at l, have the same relationship dun sa function nila. So, kung titignan nyo, uh, Yung quantum numbers n, l, and m have some limited number of uh, values na pwede na i-take. So n could be an integer, 0 to 2, so 1, 2, hindi pala 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. L is, of course, from 0 to n minus 1, so nakadepende sa n. And m is actually dependent sa l, so we have plus or minus l yung limit niya, including 0. So for example, if you have n equals 2, ang l mo can only have 0 and 1 values. And m mo could have negative 1, 0, and 1. Ganyan lang siya. So, ganun lang. Pag nabigay ako ng 3, of course, ang value ng n mo is 0, 1, 2. And m mo is negative 2 to positive 2, including 0. Alright? So, itong mga quantum numbers ito has a very specific names. So, n is the principal quantum numbers. So, this specifies the orbit. No, sorry, Bohr orbit. Energy of the Bohr orbit. L and m are related sa quantization ng orbital angular momentum Specifically, yung L is for orbital quantum number and M is the asymptotal quantum number. So, kung titinan nyo, L depends on theta. So, theta sa spherical is uh, nagmumove along a certain direction. 
and yung key is asymutal direction, di ba? Kaya ganun lang siya. So, uh, yung energy level ng N is independent of quantum numbers L and M. Uh, of course, meron siyang degeneracy. Ang ibig sabihin ng degeneracy, certain energy na parehas lang. So, there is an N squared degeneracy, meaning kung alam ba nila N, ganun kadami, of states and energy EN. So, since uh, ito yung rule na kailangan nang sundin, you have the summation of N uh, 2L plus 1 from 0 to N minus 1 should be limited to N squared lang. So, ito yung rule na nagpapalaw dito sa dito, sabi ni Peko kanina. Okay. Alright. So, in addition to N, L, and M, ang electron, meron pa siyang uh, isa pang quantum number. Tinatawag na spin quantum number. Which only takes uh, two values. Positive one half and one half. So, yung yun yung quantum number. Pero yung spin angular momentum is just i-multiply mo na siya na h bar. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga quantum numbers are actually a factor of h bar. Or Planck's constant in that for that matter. Diba, I discovered to before kay Max Planck and si Einstein din kung na-quantize na yung mga energy. Kaya doon nag nagsimula yung term na quanta and of course quantum mechanics. Alright? So, uh, yan na lang muna for this uh, lecture. And magbibigyan na lang ako ng isa pang lecture for the as last lecture for ano, for ana for na magbibigay ng another problem set. So dito magbibigay ako ng nabanggit ko sa inyo na PS1. Extend ko na lang yung deadline. And for that next one for next week, uh, magbibigay na lang ako ng isa pang props and yun na yan. Ah, uh, yun lang basahin niyo yung mga pinaba yung mga pinabasa ko. Ah, uh, magbibigay lang din ulit ako ng list of reading. Tapos bibigay ko rin of course yung notes na diyan dito. Okay, so thank you sa pakikinig. Sana may natutunan kayo. And if you have some question, you can email me and you can set some appointment then. Uh, so sorry, consultation. So uh, just uh, watch out for my email again. So thank you and have a nice day.